we're making appetizers this week and I'm going to make a delicious fried zucchini ball and for this recipe I'm going to saute my zucchini and my onion in some butter and I loved Paula's suggestion this week on the goggles, the glasses for chopping up the onion so that the fumes don't make your eyes water. I don't really have any safety glasses like she had, but I do have these. All right, so I got chopped out. got all of my onion chopped up, almost all of it. It was rather large and I didn't want quite that much in my recipe, but depending on the size of your onion, you'll be able to gauge what you want in your, um, in your version if you make it. Now I have my onion and my zucchini saute it in here, and I am going to add a little olive oil too. I know there's a few things that I cook with both. This is one of them just because I like the flavor of both in this dish. I'm also going to add some salt, plenty of salt, and pepper. Fresh garlic powder, not fresh, <laughs> it's garlic powder. If I was using fresh garlic, it would be fresh, right? And chili powder. I want to have a little kick. Because when we mix it with the cream cheese, which we're going to do, the creaminess and the chili powder balance each other out really well. So I couldn't resist being silly. I loved Paula's little bit and how much she was giggling when she was uh, showing us how to use safety goggles in the kitchen. And I saw my daughter's mask and snorkel over on the table by the uh, pool supplies and towels and things. And I had to be goofy. So that's kind of who I am. I love to joke and, and have fun. Um, I'm also sappy. I'm one of those people that cries at uh, silly commercials and, and movies and yes even my kids like animated movies make me tear up and cry. My husband laughs. He's come to the point now where if we're going to see specific movies that he knows oh something might be happening he'll bring tissues with us so that I can have a tissue for my nose. So that's let's see I have two daughters not just one. I have a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old. I'm happily married to the man of my dreams, my soulmate for 14 years. And lucky enough, I am a total history geek, and so is he. So that's probably why it works out so well. I say I'm a history geek because I love nothing more than traveling to historical places and trying to imagine what life would have been like during that time period. We went to some castles in Europe. I grew up on a horse farm in Southern California. I know, it's a little weird. I am near Disneyland, the beach, Hollywood, and I'm on a horse farm. But we got to travel around because the horses my mom raises are international horses. They're from Connemara, Ireland. And so we got to travel a bit when I was growing up with my mom to go to some horse events. And we got to go visit places that were ruins of castles. And that was amazing. And to see how they would have lived back then, some, some of the cuisine and food that they would have had, amazing. And we went to Virginia for our holiday this uh, spring. And my parents have reacquired my mom's eighth grandfather back, my ninth grandfather, built this plantation home in 1842. 
1742. And his son put an addition on in the early 1800s when he inherited it from his father. And our family had it for 100 years. And then they sold it or traded it, I guess. And lot, we didn't have it for 100 years. And now my parents have just repurchased it. So it's back in the family now. And hopefully we're going to keep it for more than 100 years. It's so cool. There's no kitchen in the house. It's detached. That's what they did back in those days in Virginia. Apparently, the kitchen would burn down a lot because of the um, open hearth fireplaces. And so if the kitchen burnt down, they didn't want the whole house to burn down. That's one of the versions that I've heard. Another version that I heard of history is that it was more affluent or a sign of affluence if you could show that you were wealthy enough to have a separate structure for your kitchen and have a procession of food come in brought by your servants. That was another way to show that you were uh, more to do than those who had to have their kitchen inside their house. And it was much more prevalent in the South than it was in the North from what we've seen in Massachusetts and in Philadelphia they had their kitchens in their houses very commonly. So here I go, talking on and on and on. I told you, geek, history, geek. I love it. Okay, now everything goes into the bowl. And to this, we're going to, of course, add our Philadelphia cream cheese. And which I buy in bulk, as you can see. Full container of eight ounces. So it'll quickly melt together from the heat of the vegetables and your cream cheese will get nice and melted. Get everything incorporated and then to this we're going to add about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Okay that looks good. Now add an egg to bind it. Here we go, just get the egg all incorporated. And then we'll start making the little balls and we're gonna dip those in some store-bought Italian breadcrumbs. And then we drop them in the deep fryer. Mmm, it's tasty good. Okay, the last ingredient you wanna add is a good squeeze of lemon right inside. And then mix that in and start forming your balls and roll them around in the store-bought Italian breadcrumbs. All right, you're just gonna scoop up a little spoonful, drop it right in your Italian breadcrumbs, and you have your little ball. And then that gently is gonna go in the oil to fry. Well, there you have it. It's all finished, it looks lovely and it is delicious. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it for you today. Oh, and thanks for the tip, Paula. I'm gonna use that again.